ladies and gentlemen, please remain in your seats for a special presentation. My name is Rodney Walker, and what you just saw was just a short summary of my life. I would like to take you on a journey and share a little bit more about my story with you today. I'm the byproduct of parents who were born and raised in Chicago's public housing projects, a mother who met her father for the first time at 12 years old and was raped and abused by him shortly thereafter, a mother who followed in her mother's footsteps and had her first child at 13 years old. A mother who lost her brother to two shots to the head with a sawed-off shotgun, one of the most brutal gang homicides in Cabrini's history. My mother, understandably, suffered from depression and post-traumatic stress disorder and was a cocaine addict as a result. My father was raised by a single mother, a mother who worked in the evenings as a bartender, and as a result, he was consumed by the streets. He eventually dropped out of high school, enlisted in the Marine Corps in 1968, and went to Vietnam, came home with an aggressive heroin addiction after seeing bodies blown apart. He couldn't keep a job. He was eventually incarcerated for selling drugs on the street. And so in the real way, this was my blueprint, my foundation, my grounding. I came into foster care at five years old. And from the age five to 17, I've been in 12 different foster homes. I have horror stories. I've experienced a lot of abuse in foster care. I've had breakdowns and episodes of depression from knowing that I had nine of the siblings who I didn't have the privilege of growing up with. And I was homeless at 17 years old, couch sofing over friends' places and in shelters for a few months. So it shouldn't surprise you that my education was the least of my priorities given all this instability in my life. And the sad reality is that my story was and still is the status quo, which should scare all of us. But as we continue to find solutions to all of these layers, let me briefly share with you the ingredients that helped me to overcome my adversity and how I use my adversity to my success. So near the end of high school, two important things happened to change the course of my life. Now I couldn't learn and grow because there were too many emotional problems that was holding me back. Uh, my parents were drug addicts. I was being beat by foster parents. I was stripped from my original birth family and I felt like no one was listening to me. But then I found a mentor who was the dean of my high school one year, and he helped me understand the importance of my trauma and the devastating impact that it had on my life and my learning. And he was a passionate and a fierce and tenacious leader. And to this day, he is still central to my life. His mentorship program changed my reality forever. Another critical turning point for me was an entrepreneurship organization that I joined in my senior year called the Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship, or NIFTY. This is an organization that was supported by invest for kids And in this organization, I learned how to build a business in my senior year of high school. And in building that business, I learned the importance of an entrepreneurial mindset and using entrepreneurialism to find the ways to deal with life's complex problems. This innovative thinking really served to my benefit. And so with the combination of lifelong mentorship and economic opportunity really provided me with the vehicle that I needed to begin real healing. And as a result, I'm the first in my family to graduate from high school, the first in my family to graduate from Morehouse College and obtain a graduate degree from Yale University. I've written a book on my journey called A New Day One. And since doing that, I've had the opportunity to travel and to learn about the importance of trauma and how it affects and impacts youth all across our country. So in conclusion, I would like to say that there have been many investments made in my life. And the best way I can describe the impact of those investments is this way. In the end, nothing about my life is fixed. 
I still live with the horrors of violence and poverty and social failure just as I did in 2008. My parents are still drug addicts. My family is still torn apart. And my world is still broken. My high school still produces a 50% dropout rate. And the homicide rate in my community continues to climb. Sadly, most kids in our system will not make it. But many others are, and it's because of the dedication, the perseverance of the organizations you're supporting today and in the past. So thank you for your investment in Chicago's youth.